we come now to a time in our worship where we have the opportunity to, to spend a few moments lifting the things on our hearts and minds up to God. As we pray together today, I encourage you to remember those in our congregation who have suffered loss recently, those who are sick, those who just feel isolated and alone. You may not all know them all by name, but by entering into a time of prayer and remembering them, you're boldly proclaiming to God that you care about these people, that they're a part of your community. And in that declaration of praying for them, gathered together in spirit, we make a difference. We are people of prayer because we are people of hope. And so as we come to God today, let us come in hopeful anticipation and expectation that God hears our prayers, knows our hearts, forgives us our sins, and walks beside us. As we begin today in our time of prayer, I'm going to allow for just a few moments of silence for you to center yourself, take a couple of breaths, maybe even pause the video as I've said time and time again to prepare yourself for this time. Let us now go before God in prayer. Gracious God, we come to you today as a people who just yesterday celebrated and remembered our independence as a nation. And we do indeed celebrate the freedoms that we hold, the freedoms to be able to speak, the freedoms to be able to worship, the freedoms to be able to love. Yet God, we know that true freedom comes not from a flag or a government or a country, as blessed as we are to have those things. No true freedom comes because he who the Son sets free is free indeed. True freedom comes because you have chosen to liberate us from our slavery to sin and death. And that's the type of freedom that can never die. That's the type of liberation that comes from you and is promised in you forever. And so while we come to you thankful for all that we have in this country, for all of the luxuries that are afforded us, we also come God knowing that you are the provider of all that we really need. For your grace truly is amazing. Yet we confess that too often we've grown accustomed to your loving kindness, to your forgiveness, to your faithful provision. We confess that sometimes we forget where we would be without your grace. So thank you, God, for doing for us what we could never do for ourselves. Remind us how much our independence, our freedom in Christ actually cost you and how much that tells us about your relentless love and grace. Wake us to a sense of the security that comes by resting in the shelter of your hands on us. In the midst of all that is before us, O rock of our salvation, we ask for you to come and give us peace for there is much for us to fear these days. It seems as though perhaps we've even reached a point of no return. How can we be united when we disagree? How can we love when there is so much fear? God, we ask that when we are frightened, you would hold us even tighter. When we find ourselves without hope, reassure us. When we are angry, soothe our spirits. For those who are living in recovery from illness, or for those who are fearing illness, we pray for healing as well as courage. We also lift up to you those who have been crippled by the loss of a loved one. Grant them trust in your goodness and your faithfulness to them. Help them to know that they are not alone, even though it feels like that is the reality today. For all of us who have put our trust in you, 
Help us to know that you will not lead us astray. Grant us the power of being able to let go of knowing what the future holds. Teach us to give our futures to you. Show us how to sacrifice in meaningful ways, even if we don't see instant results. And in the midst of all of the change that is facing us, give us the confidence in your love above all else. Jesus, you are the welcoming host, and you have promised us that your door is open to anyone who knocks. And today you invite us to gather around your table to share the meal that you have prepared. Help us to live as neighbors with all of those who eat with us and with all of those who long to eat from your table. Teach us also new ways to create community even in this time of separation. Teach us ways to find time to share your table even if we can't physically be together. Unite us with our brothers and sisters everywhere, reminding us that they are our neighbors. Remind us, God, that caring for others comes at a cost, that it's not always convenient, and that it may even be with those whom we deem our enemies. Yet, God, the table we will share today, the love and life of Christ, the the flesh and blood of Christ. That table teaches us that your love is for all people without exception and that our calling is to follow in that love. For as you have said, they will know you are my followers if you love them the way that I have loved you. Help us, O oh God, to live into that love in ways that are new and imaginative and in ways that can greatly reflect the love of Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>